Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast, a podcast that transcends the typical personal development journey. You're not new to this. You've read the books, attended the seminars, and perhaps even tried various coaching programs, yet something still feels amiss. Elon and Guy have over two decades of relentless searching and a million dollars invested in their personal growth quest. Here's the revelation. You're not missing anything. You're not even behind. You might have just been searching in the wrong places. In each episode, we'll uncover the most effective, straightforward practices that have profoundly impacted our lives and the tens of thousands of our clients from all over the world. This is about real, sustainable results for those dedicated to their personal and spiritual growth. So get ready to explore and enjoy the show. Hey everybody. <laughs> Happy Tingling Tuesday. <laughs> uh, oh little Zoolander for you guys. Oh First thing goodness. on a Tuesday. Well. Well, what can Zoolander teach us about spirituality, guy? Yeah. I've been awake since three o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. That sounds fun. Why did you do that to yourself? Uh, just kid, kids. A kid thing? In the nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. But somehow we have this like B twelve drink that just, 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 just uh, corrects everything um, on these kind of days. I use it sparingly, but on days like this, it's a uh, B twelve. What? It's like a, it's a fizzy drink from Arbon that has like oh. green tea and a bunch of other stuff. And I swear to God, out of out of everything I've ever tried for like clean energy, it's top of the heap. It's just a really, really good experience. It's funny, I also had a shitty night's sleep, uh, mostly because I went to bed late. Uh, by the way, be nice. congratulations to the Florida Panthers. It did. What a great series, by the way. Fantastic. I, Amazing I, playoffs just as a whole, like yeah. the entire thing just was so cool. And nobody cares. I'm not even a hockey fan, but honestly, it was so fun to get like swept up into the whole thing of it. It was cool. Um, cool series. So anyway, I went to bed late and, uh, my knee literally in the middle of the night started throbbing in pain and, uh, I woke up to that, which was unpleasant and uh, <laughs> both unpleasant and like my mental aspect of it is just so upset that yeah. this knee thing is not uh, healing or like it heals and then it gets bad. And then I was just watching uh, a snippet, not a whole part of it. There's a uh, documentary on the last 12 days of Roger Federer's career. Was it good? Uh, I enjoyed it because it's Roger and, and I'm, you know, in, interested in anybody who's a master at anything and yeah. what their life is. It's funny. He's not at all like I would imagine because on the court, he's a kind of, you know, he's clearly very close to his family and loves his kids. Oh my God. Highly integrous human being. And I got at least energetically, that's what I got from him. But also, you know, I was just curious because he got a lot of knee stuff at the end of his career there. And that's kind of what had him stop playing, but maybe there's something there for you. Not, so much and what to do, but how to relate to it. Yeah. I, oh, and what, one other thing I just want to say about this too, because I had this thought this morning, I'm listening to Cryon and I'm just kind of getting that like everything you're trying to resolve in your life. I know we talk about this in L2, but it's like, I'm getting the layers of this. So, you know, we talk about like the, the not meddling and stuff like that. It's like, we need to stop. We get to stop literally trying to resolve anything in our lives. Hmm. It's like, it, it's not how the mechanism works. It's really in the letting it go and not paying attention to it. Like once you've acknowledged it and the intention is there, that is all you're supposed to do. Whatever happens after that is not within the realm of your control, nor do you need to, to put any undue pressure on yourself to accomplish that goal. So if you're focused on the knee, like you've acknowledged the knee is hurt, you have the intention to heal it, let everything else go. And let the let, let the, the, the resource of the divine spirit, call it whatever you will, whatever you will just simply stay through the intention. It's like this thing that's there, resolve it. And everything that comes after that, resolve it as well and let it go. And I say this because I had um, a few years ago, I was doing a lot of stretching at that time. I'm still stretched quite a bit, but then it was like, we were in COVID. I had all, the time in the world. all sorts of time. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to do a split like Jean-Claude Van Damme. I did not do a split like Jean-Claude. Yeah. I did that when I was seven time uh but then, since then have not been able to accomplish that feat 
nonetheless, I had, I, I've gotten, you know, reasonably flexible. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do, what are those things when you put like your knees on the ground and you just bend your body backwards? Yeah. Like a reverse Nordic, I think something Whatever like that. Whatever it is, like, I should not have done that. Like, oh. Like I couldn't, you know, I like, I pull myself back and then like, couldn't get myself forward. And so I had to like, kind of like, like amalgamate my body and like roll out of it like this. Oh no. So I, I, I like, tore something in my abdomen at that oh. time who knows i never i never really got it scientifically assessed or medically assessed but suffice it to say any sort of ab work bending over leg lifts everything was out the window and for like i want to say two years okay like couldn't do any of those things uh, and this was from i used to do you know the wheel the ab wheel yeah I, I used to do that from standing regularly yep a few times a week right i was reasonably good shape right so like all that is out the window can't do any of those fucking things now and this is when i got peptides we did all the you know bpc that was when we were in utah I remember i was one of the areas i was, I was shooting my knee was the other area and so also right knee stuff which was just kind of like lingering didn't really wasn't really connected to anything okay so like i went for years just like just trying to get a result trying to solve it because i'm like i can't move i can't do the things i want to do blah 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 I don't know what happened, but like at some point it faded from my consciousness That's right. that I had these problems. Yep. I think I just got to the point where I was like, well, it is what it is. So, you know, it's like when you take headache medicine, Yep. does the headache go away because you took the medicine or because the moment you took the medicine, you stop, you already assume that the headache is going to go away. And so you stop putting mm -hmm. awareness on the, on the, on the headache. And I remember also when I had the dent, the tooth stuff and I had the, uh, all that stuff during COVID as well. When I was had the infection here, it was like when I put the awareness on it. <sighs> we said all the time, "What you you know, it's spiritual one What you what you focus on, yeah, it grows, right? So it's like if you want it to shrink, what do you need to do? You need to get the awareness off of it. Otherwise, it's growing into something. You're you're growing into a beast because you're you're watering the the soil in which the seeds are sitting, and you're unfortunately reconfiguring and telling your body more of that even though what you're saying mentally is less of that. That's not what the, cause the, the, the awareness is what's growing it. And then you have the story, right? Just, it's just like healing work. That's right. Same when way. you try to figure it out inside the mental architecture. So it's like, so I'm learning. I don't care whether it comes to money, whether it comes to your health. So anyway, long story short about it, all that stuff healed itself. I, I don't know what happened to the knee. It never hurts anymore. I was just, I did roll ass today and I, and I just remembered this morning at four 30 in the morning. Cause I was up at three and I was like, all right, I was going to go work out before I, I was like, I'll work out before I realize I'm tired. Cause that was the, the thinking this morning. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing the rollouts and I was doing like, I'm banging these rollouts, you know, 50, 60, whatever. And I think to myself, I'm like, wait a second. I used to I do this for my feet. No, no, no. I think, to, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not there yet. But I'm thinking to myself, I used to not be able to do this. Even there was a while where like I would do it and I would still feel it in the background and I would feel my body like tense up a little bit because I wouldn't release all the way because I was afraid I was going to tear because I, I it actually had healed when we moved to Carlsbad and then I went to the gym and started doing exercises and it like happened again. And I was like, oh man, I just lost like a year or two <laughs> of like healing. Um, but like the point is, is that it up and disappeared. Yeah. which really reflects like every other healing experience I've ever had. It just yep. faded into the oblivion of possibility that there's no longer what was happening in my life. And so I'm listening to cry. And he says that this morning, he's like, look, he's like, he's like, you need to stop trying to heal yourself. He's like in the very act of doing that. It's not because you're, you're, what you're saying is you're every time you take the wheel, you're disconnecting from the divine intelligence. Mm. I'm saying this now in my own words, right? So, and we were just talking about this in L1. It's like, you're saying, I know what to do here. And it's like, okay, then you know what to do here. And it's like, well, you don't, and you don't have the blueprint, but it does. And so it's like, there's, we need to have, like, what are good quarterbacks in the NFL do? They have amnesia. They, they forget what happened on the play before, and they just play it like it's the first play every time. Yeah. That's why Tom Brady's Tom Brady. Because he's the best amnesia on the field. He's just in the moment. He's present with what needs to be done right now. And that's that. And every quarterback that has that emotional drive, right? And they get they get really connected with what happened previously. Suck. They can't throw the ball. They fuck up the plays. They make the wrong calls. It's it's exactly the same. So it's like, can can you get to a place even when there's pain to be like, it's not my problem. 
I don't have to do anything about that. But you also have to get over the fact that like, well, I want to play tennis in two weeks. Yeah. And then you got to sit with the sensation of the disappointment that arises that you may not. And that's working towards surrendering towards that experience. Because as long as you put that, which is what personal development tells you to do, put that thing out there in your future. And then you don't, and then it doesn't, and your body doesn't do that thing. You compress it in that moment and it re-injures itself in a, in, in a kind of way, in a subtle way. Correct. Right? And then you, and then you're back in the loop and then it's even more time now. Yeah. So why not just let it be? Cause Federer said the same thing. He said, this is what he says in the documentary. He says, I knew, cause I saw that once you get surgery, your career is basically beginning to end. hundred percent. So he's like, so I'm never going to get the surgery. And then he, he has this thing and he just can't avoid it. He had like four knee surgeries and like, a year or something like that, like a very short period of time. Um, sorry, I had a little bit more about that, and I was kind of slipped my brain while I brought that through. But but suffice it to say, it was like oh, and then he rushed himself back onto the court when he knew he wasn't one hundred percent. Reaggravated, and then he had a bunch of other surgeries on it. And he's like, had I just waited and let it do its thing, I probably would have had a few more years in my career. And he's like, and I knew that, right? And so it's like. That's the thing, right? Patience and grace. Yep. And if you can't do that activity, okay, then then for the meantime, find something else that feels yep. good. That's, and let that activity that's the heal. Biggest, and listen, I'm not paying. I'm not playing for championships or money or anything like that. It's just it's such a love, sure, and pastime for me. You know, when I was uh, when we were to you and and Philly, like I didn't do any of that stuff. So I gave myself basically like a two and a half. I I didn't play the week before, so it was like three weeks off. I came back and I was like, okay, it's, it's good. I, it's still definitely not a hundred percent, but it's good. I played yesterday <clears throat> and for, it was the first day I got on the court and I actually felt good. Like I felt strong. I felt fast. I, I felt all the things. And then at the end of the session, we were playing and I served. And for whatever reason, I felt I felt that the same thing happened. And I literally, I was like, fuck. Yeah. And I just stopped. And then I was supposed to play this morning. And I like literally in the middle of the night, I was just laying and I could feel like the swelling in my knee. And when I got up to, to go to the bathroom this morning, I was like, I can't, I can't play. It's just swollen. It's tight. Yeah. It feels really, really uh, not, not pleasant. And, um, but I agree with you a hundred percent. I think when I hurt my shoulder, uh, you know, I lay, I like sleep on my side like this. And so every time I would go to sleep on that side, it was just so much pain and I would have to like try to re right. and then recently I'm just like, you know, I'll go to bed I'm reading my Kindle and I'm just like this and I'm lying there. And I'm like, Oh, remember when that thing used to hurt? Like it doesn't, yeah. even, it's just gone. It, it wasn't. Yeah. So Yeah. I, I I know it. And, and the other thing that is always very interesting for me is when you're in the pain, it feels like it is forever. Yeah. It's like, I've been having this thing forever. But when you think about it, it's like that shoulder thing was around for maybe three, four months. And then it was gone. And like, I don't even feel it anymore. The yeah. knee thing, I prior to this, it hadn't happened for probably like two years or whatever it yeah. was, right? So... I know it's part of it. Then I have these weird thoughts of like, and I hate these thoughts, but it's like, you know, I, I like to play tennis five days a week and it's like, maybe that's too much for clearly, what my body clearly too much wants, right. Or, yeah. or can do. So then it's like, okay, well, do I go down to four? Do I go down to three? And then, and then part of me is like, isn't that admitting that I'm just old and my body's falling apart? And I'm like, oh. Hey man, there's only so much tread on the tire. At I don't, some point, I don't want point, to buy that story. I, well, story, not story so far in this game called life, a hundred billion people have played. And as far as I know, no one's made it out alive. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not thinking I'm not going to make it out alive. I just, but look, look, look long, like, like it's like a, like dad with working out, you know, like old school is, lift as much weight as humanly fucking possible. And when you get older, you're like, there's some value in, in progressive lifting and strengthening your joints and having muscle tissue. But it's like, okay, if you're injured all the time when you're bench pressing, like, okay, you gotta, you gotta find a different motion yeah. 
and way to activate those muscle groups and enjoy it. And it's like, okay, that, that's not saying defeat. That's moving with the energy. Yeah. And you may come back to being able to play at that. Like, look, you know, for me, the same thing. I, when I met Mandy, it was 20, 2017, eight to 9% body fat. I got extremely accustomed to looking shredded around the clock very effortlessly, but that required working out five days a week, having good sleep, eating without all the other, you know, distractions that happen when you're a parent. Like I've been, I, I spent the last four ish years after that, like really being a kind of upset on myself for like not being at the level of fitness that I, um, I got accustomed to and doing all the amazing things I could do with my body at that time, jumping really high, the rollouts and this, that, the other. Now I'm kind of like, all right, you know, like it, it is what it is. I'm still vain as fuck. I'm going to be in great shape, but I'm going to be in the best shape I can be with the resources and time that I have. And so I'm going to do what I can in the state that I can do it in. And if look, you put, it doesn't mean you're old, but if you're playing five days a week, you're putting a lot of mileage on a knee in a very condensed period of time. And it's yeah. like, and tennis is not, not for the faint of heart. You are a full sprint. It's not, it's not joint friendly. No, you're in a full sprint and changing direction very quickly. There's a lot of twisting. There's a lot of lunging. Like, you're moving the body in a lot of actually great ways because you're kind of inadvertently doing a lot of like micro stretches with hardcore, um, you know, uh, cardiovascular. And they've said for a fact now, like it, racket sports is the number one correlated sport to longevity. Yeah. Which makes I, sense. By yeah. three, it, it's, it adds 10 years to your life, whereas running, sure. uh, swimming, like things that you would think, biking, whatever, those at most add three. So yeah. it's almost 3x. And weirdly enough, ping pong is the number one. It's not tennis because it's it's the it's the quick it's the quick reaction time that makes the brain have to activate in a certain way that that adds the type of you know neuronal uh, patterning that I guess is is keeps the brain very healthy. So I'm sure tennis is, is right up there too. Yeah. But that's why pickleball, right, is you know uh, like they said is is. Uh, it's probably become so popular and you could play with till you're much older and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, suffice it to say, it's like, again, you know, yes, you may have the desire to do that five times a week, but okay. Is it, is it worth, is it worth the downstream effect of that? Like some of us, like, you know, some people like to get high five times a week, but yeah, their, their life is probably not going to move too fast or too far in that sense. So it's yeah, like, I mean, I know, I know that I have a three week vacation built in where I'm not going to play right now. Basically, the rest of the week I'm taking off. So I'm going to see the Rolfing guy again. But like, I, I, I'm with you. I, what I sit with is the upset and disappointment. Um, because it's something I love so much. Yeah. And we don't, none of us, none of us have ever heard you say that before. <laughs> Alex, um, was saying, Alex was saying, "Is he talking about tennis again?" As he likes to say, "It's his final frontier." It's my final frontier. <laughs> yeah, and it, the, here's the interesting part: it's always teaching me, right? Whether it's mental teaching, whether it's physical teaching, it it so, somehow tennis is just a really good uh, teacher for me. Yeah, and it it's a, it's it's it literally is a microcosm. Of a macrocosm of life, of the yeah, part of life. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And when when I even like, I'm always interested in all athletes, like really really high caliber athletes. It doesn't even matter what sport. It can be swimming, fencing. I don't give a shit. Like to get to um, a super high level of mastery in anything, uh, not just sports, but in anything. It's really fascinating to listen to how much mindset at a certain point is the is the end all be all. It's not about the technique. It's not about the this. It literally is that the mindset. And I don't know if I share this with you or or with the community. I was up in uh, Pennsylvania, and one of the one of our friends' friends is a he he played college ball, and now his son plays basketball. Um, baseball and he's one of the coaches and they got his son got onto like a really really good team who always competes for state championships and this and that and his best friend from college ended up becoming one of the preeminent uh mindset coaches specifically for baseball players so he works with a lot of pitchers 
And uh, so he reached out to him and he was like, hey, listen, just crazy thought. I'm coaching. And these kids are like under 10. So they were very, very young. He's like, would you ever consider coming and just talking to these kids? And so obviously this guy charges like whatever it is, $2,000 an hour, $2,500 an hour. So he's like, that, that's, you know, these are 10 year old kids. Like I don't, I don't need that level. But they ended up doing a package with one of his other coaches, which was a lot less. And anyway, he took these kids through just not basic, but like mindset stuff about how to deal with um, failure. And because he's like, every time these kids would lose, it would just be a disaster. And then it was like picking up the pieces and da, da, da. And in a sport like baseball, where kind of like in life, you know, if, if you hit the ball three out of 10 times in baseball, you're considered an all time great, right? Three out of 10, meaning 70% of the time you fail. And so he shifted that uh, as a team, which was really interesting and something I actually want to look at for the community. There's some app he told me called like Habit something. I got to look into it. Uh, but basically the entire team created ha daily habits, hmm. um, 15 push-ups, 15 air squats, uh, 15 this, make the bed, uh, practice this, whatever it is, right? And there's like a checklist. And then you can see how many of the people in that group have done that. So what you're basically watching is other people check the boxes because you're doing it as a community, not as an individual. And so you know how that works. You never want to be the one right. that didn't check the box while everyone else is checking the box. And so all these kids got into all these great habits and they haven't lost a single game this entire year. That's they've won cool. every tournament they've been in. They're blowing people out. And this is the same kids that were there last year, but just the, the transformation is so markedly different. And he's like, it's all mindset. They just, you know, they get down in the game and it's, it's nothing to them. They're like, okay, so this is what's here right now. Right. And I'm just thinking this is, Chances are none of these kids are going pro, right? Like they're, they're good at 10, but they're not like, these are the, most of them probably won't even play college ball, but the life lessons that they're acquiring at 10 of yeah. what it looks like and feels like to put in effort and master something and get results in something through adversity is the kind of things that, um, you know, most adults don't have access to or don't know. So it's, uh, it's beautiful. And that's why I think like, it doesn't really matter what it is that you are actively getting better at in life, whether it's yoga, cooking, writing, art, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if you use that as your lens into how you operate, it can be the greatest teacher because on our on your journey to mastering something, you're inevitably going to hit all the parts, all the parts that feel like they're not good enough, all the parts that feel like a fraud, all the parts that push you, all the parts that make you stop. You you, it's just you constantly battling you, and that's why I love. It's like it's an it's a never ending growth opportunity. Uh, when you play, when you play something, anything. Yeah. Uh, we were on L1 and one of the participants was talking about that too. We didn't get too much into it, but you know, it's like, we call it the game of life. Right. And we used to be in a practice where they would define what, you know, what is a, what is a game? Like what makes a game a game? Right. And so game is like, well, there's definable rules, usually two teams and something is more important than something else. Right. In the game. And so it's like life is also, it's, just, it's, it's happening, right? But the context in which it's happening has been made up by humanity. And we, we play this game and they used to have this punchline. They don't do this anymore, but they would say, you know, um, they're kind of like say the story of creation in, in, in their own way um, from the perspective of two beings talking through infinity and how it would be to be a, a being that knew it was uh, a being that lived in a timeless state. And so these time, so the, the, the two beings keep going back and forth. They create this game called life. And then the most important part of the game 
is to forget that they are the all, they are the everything, because then the, the only way to make the game worthwhile and make it exciting all the time right. is to have ultimately your life at stake. That's right. right. And that's kind of what we're all doing is we're consciousness, right? This, this thing that we try to define, but it's the all, the spark of God, whatever you want to call it. And, <clears throat> and we are literally living in a timeless state, but we're pretending that we have extremely limited amount of time. And something I've learned through my practices, like I'm, I'm not just investing in this body and this lifetime. I'm just investing in my consciousness, period. Like I, I really do believe I get to have many, many other bodies or embodiments, not necessarily human, but other embodiments. And I'm like, I might as well invest <laughs> And, you know, if I'm going to come to third density reality over and over and over again, as we seem to do, I might as well make every experience a little bit better. Yeah. It's just like when you, you know, tell somebody, hey, you can build a business. Well, the risk, the money, the this, the that. Okay, well, you'll spend the rest of your life working for somebody being kind of miserable. And yeah, the other one might be not the easiest road to take, but it's very fulfilling. And you you make up your own time and this, that, the other. It's like, you know, where would you be five to 10 years from now if you invested heavily in yourself and you learned a new skill set and you applied that you know would you be further down the road or you could wait another 10 years and that would be fine and then get started 10 years from now but you know instead of 35 you'll be 45 when you get going and so it's like the the best time you know was always yesterday but the second yeah. best time is today the second best time is today and it's just never too late to get started no matter how old you are we could all use more peace more safety more love more connection in our lives and the only thing that's really in a way of that is your conditioning and it's not, and it's not your fault, how you were conditioned or the environment that you grew up in, no, nor is it anybody's fault, the, the color of the skin, the religion that they're in, or the creed or the cultures that they were born into. Like that's the world that they know. We cannot judge a person because they were born at a certain point of longitude and latitude, you know, and that's, that's the, that's the bag they got living in that environment. But once you, once you recognize that though, Okay, so I, I, I have been shaped by this conditioning, then at that point, it's not your fault, but it's absolutely then your responsibility to choose to do something about it or not. And your choice could be to not do anything about it at all. And then the same token, if you're living in suffering and pain and, you know, mental angst and all the rest of it, then, then you take responsibility for that, then that's my choice. And if you want to learn how to how to take steps, I'm not saying it's overnight like this, but take steps to start slowly moving away from that and moving into a different state of being, which is the definition of evolution and clearly happens all the time, everywhere, constantly. Um, okay. Maybe it will take you five years. Maybe it will take you 10 years, but would you rather be in this state of suffering? Like life for most people is really hard and challenging and it's hard and challenging whether you do the thing or you don't do the thing, you know, for most of us, it's just, just choose, just choose what you're committed to. I don't like to see things as hard, but like there are definitely things in life that are really, really challenging to be with, to experience, the emotional aspect, the mental things that happen. But okay, so it's hard, all right? Well, let's just, let's even create a context that life is fucking hard. It's all this, great, then choose your hard. Yeah. Would you rather- Are you feeling inspired by these podcasts? Is this approach striking a chord with you? Imagine taking this journey even further with personal coaching from Guy and I, right from your own home on Zoom. Join us at our next live event. They happen quarterly. It's an accessible, cost-effective way to dive deep into these transformative practices, not just theoretically, but experientially. Attendees often share that they've experienced unprecedented levels of peace, support, forgiveness, and awareness. Remember, healing isn't just a mental exercise. It must be felt and released through the body. So here's a special gift just for you, our valued listener. Visit intuitivemind.live and use the coupon code old soul to receive 25% off your ticket. The intuitive mind event is unlike any other so impactful that many participants return multiple times, some as many as 10, 12, even 15 times. Plus once you register, we'll immediately send you a recording of a previous event so that you can start practicing right away. Don't miss this opportunity. Go to intuitivemind.live, secure your spot for our next live event using the coupon code Old Soul, and start your transformative journey today. Now, back to the show. Work really hard on the suffering you're in right now or work really hard towards getting yourself out of it. It's your choice. Yep. 
<clears throat> and I, it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying before. For me, it's if you focus on that it's hard, that's basically what expands. And then you're fighting that it's hard. Whereas every athlete will tell you this. It's like even yesterday, I, I love to listen to the interviews after where they ask these people like, how do you feel right now? And it's like, this person is like so jacked on whatever, like how can they describe to you how they feel? It's like so pathetic. Um, but they ask this um, great question, especially with this series is because like they went up three, nothing and then lost three straight and then game seven. And it's like, oh shit. And so you think all the pressure is on them. And what they were all saying in one way or another is that once they won three, the end, the finish line was so close that they put so much pressure on themselves to win game four, five, and six. Like they just, right. They had to win. They had, to. and so they actually stopped doing what they, what got them there, right? Like they, they were like, okay, we're just need to score a bunch of goals instead of just playing really good defense, which is what got them there. And they were saying in game seven that they actually had no pressure whatsoever because they were like, listen, final game of the season, let's do what we do. And, and they were talking about trusting the process and that for whatever reason, for them to win game seven, they had to lose three games. So the, the coach said something like, in order for us to learn how to win four games, we have to lose three. Yeah. And I just, I sat back and I was like, wow, what an interesting perspective, right? Everything that you are going through is always here to teach. And when we're in it, it sucks because the lessons don't usually come in these very like pretty bows and, you know, like here, learn this lovely lesson. Sure. It, it usually is kind of like a, a kick in the ass or a kick to the nuts or, you know, a slap to the face or whatever it might be. The thing that I think for us that do this work is so, so different is we don't have to convince ourselves anymore from a reframe perspective or like a tell myself this story of, oh, you know what? It's all going to work out. Like, yeah, everyone tells me, it's like, oh, it's all going to work out. Uh, and they say like all these platitudes that you hear in, in books and this and that. But if I like track their nervous system, I know their nervous system doesn't believe any of that. It's just like this bullshit that they keep telling themselves and hoping that at some point they're going to believe it. Like, you know, this is life and it's okay. And, you know, I have it better than other people. And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't make any fucking difference in how you're experiencing life. Whereas I think for our students and, and people who practice this work, you realize that it's not about the affirmation. It's not about the, the mental reprogramming. None of that really makes any difference. It's about training your nervous system. What, you know, some people call the like, we were talking about the nervous system reset protocol. It's retraining the nervous system to create resiliency such that as the waves of life will inevitably come because they're coming. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you do, right? You're going to experience whether it's hardship in your health, relationships, financial, having to move, whatever it is, like life is going to happen, right? If your nervous system is so brittle that the second something pushes it, it breaks. And now you're in the throes of overwhelm, anxiety, stress, uh, confusion, which leads to exhaustion and trying to figure shit out and feeling stuck, right? Versus when you create resiliency in the nervous system, not from a concept base, but actually a felt sense, what happens is when the stress comes, it really becomes the teacher because the stress is what pushes the nervous system, but the nervous system doesn't break. It just bends. And the resiliency that I'm talking about is, you know, can it withstand a hurricane of bending, right? Like I watch palm trees in Florida, 
with these crazy gusts of winds where in, in New York, where I live there, a crazy gust of wind and some wet thing and all these old ass trees are just falling left and right because they don't have any flexibility in them. Whereas these palm trees or even, you know, in the jungle of Colombia, like these amazing bamboo trees, dude, these things can go like sideways. And then what happens? The wind stops and it just goes right back to where it was. It, it, it's unfazed. And to me, that's how I envision the nervous system. It's when you can get your nervous system to a place that it can be with the stress of life and it can bend, fully bend. And then just come back every time it does the bend and come back, you're actually creating more resiliency and more strength in the nervous system. And so you're learning through the experience and then the experiences become rather than something to fight, it becomes exciting. It becomes the opportunity, which is why I said with tennis, it's, it's tennis for me highlights these places where my nervous system still wants to break. And what I bring to it is I bring softness. I bring acceptance. I bring allowing. I bring ground. I bring safety. I bring all the things that I practice in all these other places in life, you know, between I think tennis and being a parent <laughs> are the two things that I kind of feel throw my, uh, my nervous system or tests my nervous system. I should say the resiliency of it the most. And again, like I don't do it perfectly. Far from it. I don't, really. I, also, I also don't do it to do it perfectly. Yeah, that's what, that, and that was going to be my next point. Like, it's not about, do, and I, trust me, I'm saying this from experience because I used to Same. get really upset every time I didn't live up to the way that I felt like I should have handled that situation right? or that interaction. And I would go into this spin of shame and guilt and you've done so much work, Elon. How is it possible that you're still having these things show up? And why would you yell at that person? Or why would you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or da, da, da. I don't even do that anymore. I, I, I don't even spend my energy and time there because I'm clear. What was that thing when someone said like those that pilot ships are never on course. You're constantly just like course correcting, course correcting, course correcting. It. it if all of it is a game to strengthen your resiliency, then guess what? You need the stress. You need the pressure. You need the, the moments in life where it feels like you're falling flat on your face because then you find the bounce back. And instead of the bounce back taking a month or two or six or a year for some people, it's like when you can get that down to a day, an hour, a few minutes, a few seconds, it's breathtaking to watch. Yeah. Just like, wow, look how I just moved through that. Like nothing. And you remember, you're like, oh, in the past, this would have done X, Y, Z to me. And now it's just, it's not, it's just stable. And you're like, oh, okay, great. This is all, this is all that happened. I look at it very simply. I don't have a sight over what's going to happen in my life. I believe my soul or whatever that mechanism is, which is impossible to explain is directing the experiences that come into my life. If you want to think of your higher self, like if time doesn't exist, then the, the, the aspect of yourself that's already awakened itself and liberated itself is what we call the soul. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. No time. So soul has got to be this higher intelligence aspect of you. Cause there you are somewhere in what humans call the future. You've already evolved and awakened and liberated yourself. Do you now think that that aspect of yourself is vested in bringing through the experiences that are necessary for that liberation and freedom to take hold and take place? So that's what's driving the ship is your higher self connected to everything because it's already become fully realized, meaning it's no longer separate. It's part of the greater consciousness. It's part of God. And it has every probability possibility and it's giving you this experience in this moment in this moment to experience right now so i like to think of it this way i'm choosing to participate in my evolution simple as that 
And every time you choose differently, it will shift and move because that's how the quantum field moves with every iota of every cell and everything that happens on this planet. Right? Like you can't separate the big from the small. There are some really big things. There's some really small things. But the big things don't work if the small things stop working. And there are no big things if there are no small things. Right? So it's all so tied together. And so that's the point. It's like you can choose to participate in your evolution or you cannot. Either way, your evolution is coming because that soul will navigate the next best probability to kind of put you back on that path, whatever that looks like for you. Even if that means you're like doing heroin in den for 10 years somewhere, unfortunately, or fortunately, that's, that's the path that what was taken to help you evolve. And it took me a really long time to see that everything that, that was happening on the planet as egregious or violent or terrible as it is sometimes for the human, that it's still an act of love. Mm. And, and, it, and it, it was like, you're like, wait, how is that a fucking act of love? You know, like that, that just, it, because it's not about what you're seeing on the face. We've all signed agreements, if you want to think of it that way, soul agreements long ago about what roles and what experiences we were going to have on this planet. And some of us play the sacrificial role because of the impact that it has on the greater consciousness. Because when you're not separate from everything, your consideration is always of the whole. And so what a human being sees as sacrifice, the soul sees as necessary for the raising of frequency over here. When a war is happening on the planet, the response from more people is we need more empathy in this world. And so they become more empathetic. And that's what I've learned. I'm like, war is not a, it's not a, it's not devoid of love. It's horrible from the human perspective. Certainly don't want to see that on our planet. And that we're currently that's being used as a certain tool to raise the vibrational frequency elsewhere, even if it's not in that specific location. And if you don't believe me, simply study large wars like world war one and world war two and look at historical events that preceded them and how quickly human beings evolved into other states of consciousness mm. i say this all the time we went from world war ii one of the most heinous atricious things that have ever happened the 20th century was by far the most violent life-taking century in human history because of the technology that we created but we went from the 1940s like stepford wives at home and women women having no privilege and no right to say and totalitarianism and all that to within about 10 or 15 years, the hippie movement and people taking psychedelics and spirituality spreading across the planet from little pockets in India. And now that's just like part of the course. That's normal for the most part. Right? Again, with, with exceptions here and there, of course. So again, I'm not saying that we have to do it that way, but currently we're in a state or in an energy or in a season where humanity chooses to learn in hard ways. And we see that all the time. How many times do you tell your kids, don't do that, it's going to hurt you? <laughs> Does it help at all? No, then I'm like, all right, go bang your head against the wall. You'll, find, you'll figure it out by yourself. Like, you can only bang your head against the wall so many times before you're like, maybe I shouldn't hurl myself face first into a wall. You know, eventually you stop hurling yourself into a wall. We are, and, and, and this seems to be, uh, from what I, I've seen, I've been watching a lot of animal shows. <laughs> So must do a ridiculous amount. I'm like, I just learned about dolphins, for example. So dolphins, it takes them six years to teach their young how to speak the language fluently. They don't just come out speaking echolocation. It takes them six years to develop their, their own speech. And then once they start, start talking, they don't fucking stop. And dolphins live 70 years. They're social creatures just like us. They're very, very wise. They're very smart. They know how to plan. They have extremely strong bonds in their in their social atmospheres. They quarrel. I mean, it's like really fucking fascinating. I found out this weird fact about dolphins. P.S. Got to share it now because it kind of blew my mind. Because they breathe oxygen, they're not a fish. They have to be aware that they need. To, they can't just sit in the ocean and, and and sleep, so to speak. So they evolved to shut down one half of their brain. <laughs> And they keep one eye open on the other side and this eye closes and this, this part of them sleeps while this part is awake. So it can watch out for danger. And then it flip flops and this side shuts down and this eye closes and that eye opens and it watches from the other side and that's how they sleep. Come on, man. Wow. Like what, like what, like when I watch nature shows now, I'm like, wow, we were so wrong about animals, about consciousness, about intelligence, about their ability to organize, about how life shows up fucking everywhere, no matter wow. what. 
Like, it doesn't matter where they go. It is teeming with life. So it's like, we're not separate from that. We're evolving heavily. And we need to start saying, hey, this is the choice we got to make. We have been not participating with this stream of energy, where when we look at ancient cultures, it was clear, at least in my purview, that they were. Because the wisdom doesn't come from data collection. It comes from surrendering and opening and then like that. And you all have heard stories of, and you have all had this experience for sure, where you're trying to solve the problem. You're trying to like, we're talking about Elon's name. You're trying to solve the problem. You're trying to solve the problem. Money, work, blah, blah. blah. And then finally like, fuck it. I'm sick of this problem. I'm done with it. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. Or like you're trying to solve that problem and you go to watch a TV, like watch TV. Or you do some other activity, you take a break from it, and the eureka moment happens not when you're working on it, but when you're not working on it. And most scientific discoveries are made this way, by the way. So something needs to shut off in the brain, which is the survival mechanism that's assessing the data to try to make sense of it. But when we don't do that and it comes to rest, it's always about rest. Healing is about rest. Eureka moments are about rest. Intuition is about rest. Like when that's why meditation, breath work, hypnosis, like all these things, they all try to achieve the same thing. Put the body in repose, it opens, it relaxes, da 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 da. The divine intelligence comes through. It's that's not right. in the action. The action is not the action. The action is no action. That's right. And, and that's and that's the um, the the paradox of life. But most of us are like, it's like the dolphins. You're living on one side of your fucking brain. And so you get one aspect of reality. You need both. You need to live in that it really is both all the time. We talk about all this PS at the Intuitive Mind Weekend and then how to have direct experiences with it. If any of you guys are don't have a ticket yet to the weekend, you're nuts. <laughs> it's probably one of the best fucking things that we do. And it's not because the training is better than L2 or L3 or anything else like that. It's just the amount of time we get to spend together as a community. There's nothing else that Elon and I do that you're going to spend two full days with us. Even when we do our most advanced training or we work with high-end clients who pay us thousands of dollars, we get an hour, maybe two together. And like, so something can happen in that hour or two, but I know even from personal experience, when I'm in communities and I take two, three, four days to be immersed in a certain experience, it's mm -hmm. the growth is parabolic. And there's something really special for us to like know you by name and feel you and be in a space with you and like sit with you for like a long period of time that can only be generated when you're in that type of experience, except, except Columbia. Thank you, Alex. I, I, I stand corrected minus that, but like outside of that, right. We can only take 10 seats to Columbia, by the way, we are, we are right now in the process of, of booking people for Columbia. If you are interested in, in doing some indigenous plant ceremonies with us, please raise your hand and, and email Elon. But back to what's more uh, you know, prevalent is this Saturday and Sunday, we do have the Intuitive Mind Live experience. They're fucking amazing. And you can go ask people. You can go, please go watch testimonials, intuitivemind.live. It's incredible, right? Like we've done, I don't know, 20 plus of these right now. There's not a time I don't walk away from it where my mind is blown at the end of the weekend. And it's not because I think Elon and I are like, oh my God, yes, that was amazing what we did there. I'm amazed by you guys. I'm amazed at the capacity of consciousness and human beings. When we get out of our own way, when we learn how to surrender, when we learn how to actually be in our experience, stop trying to change it, stop trying to move it, stop trying to coerce it, stop trying to beg and plead with God to fix it for you. Learn what happens when you surrender. Then you will know God. Then you will know spirit. It's not about following a bunch of rules. It's not about getting it perfect. You, you were born here that way already. There is no conditions on the other side of the veil for you to be any other way than the way that you already are. The only thing that's in the way of you having that divine connection is stopping, is learning and not stopping, is learning how to recognize the mechanisms that are interested only in survival i.e. your personality, your ego, your identity. When you cannot surrender to those aspects of yourself, they take control and they do everything and they run your life. And then all this intelligence that you connect to, you get nothing. You yeah. get a fucking trickle when you could be standing under a waterfall. 
Now, you may or may not learn that in a weekend. I cannot guarantee that you're going to walk out of here and be a master of disaster of the things that we teach because it's taken Elon and I seven or eight years just to begin to master it. And, and having said that, and we're very committed to the process, but again, I wasn't like eight years ago, I'm like, oh, eight years? Yeah. Before I get to that, I was like, okay, inch by inch, baby. Whatever it takes. I'm here for my liberation. I don't know what that gets to look like. And I don't know what that timeline is. And it was a hard pill for me to swallow personally when I recognized that fact. It really was. It was like an ego check. When I was like, why is that still happening? And my teacher was like, because it's not time yet. Ooh. But I want it to be time. And it was like knife in your fucking chest. What do you mean it's not time? How long do I have to bear this pain? I don't know. I am not your soul and I didn't sign those contracts. But here's what I know. You can live this life and it would be just fine the way that it is. But when you look around, most people are apathetic, resigned and suffering, mostly quietly, some out loud. And the other thing I know now after doing this for seven or eight years, at least this aspect of our training, forget the 15 years that came before that is you don't have to. Life does not have to be that way. And there's not a client that we work with that's not committed to a process that doesn't hit hardship and have all these things that make them want to kick and scream and cut, you know, pull their fucking hair out sometimes. And eventually they do find that those balance points. They do find themselves, oh, wow, I'm leaning more into this thing that we call awareness and I'm finding myself more peaceful. Even when that thing happens, not really triggered. It's not really pulling me into that old merging consciousness you know of, of my conditioning again you're not gonna learn that it's not gonna be like this after yeah. thousands of years of doing it this way we're gonna we're gonna be pretty stumbly as we get there but give it a generation or two and the kids will never understand how schmucks like me and elon and people like you could not figure this stuff out it will be second nature to them but somebody has to walk through the muck and the dirt and all the rest of it, you know, to find out how to make this process easeful. And that means well, gotta go first. Yeah. And that means experiencing everything that is not easeful first. That's, that's the season that we're in right now, guys. For some of you guys, it's like, it's like a duck to water for other you guys. You're going to be like, a, you know, I don't know, a chimpanzee trying to make cheese. Like it's going to take you a while to figure it out, you know? So please come to the event. You know, if nothing else, even if, if, if the finances are in a shitty place, if, if the, the relationships are fucked up right now, your resources are limited, come to the fucking event. <laughs> like, just, just come to the event because it's going to make a world a difference and give you real practical experiences on how to approach any challenge you have in your life in a completely different way. I'm telling you right now, the investment that we ask for this event is nominal. We should be asking for thousands of dollars to be sharing this wisdom. We purposely don't do that in order to make this financially viable for most people. Okay. Truly like this event should be like $5,000 a fucking ticket and it would still be a goddamn bargain. Most of our programs, regardless of how expensive you think they are or cheap they are to your relative finances are a fucking bargain in comparison to the value that people get for the rest of their lives. Okay. You get to decide where, where you place value. I don't know about you guys. Like sometimes I buy like a $6 cup of coffee and I want to fucking scream or I'm like, fuck this fucking expensive coffee. <laughs> and I'm like, but I would go spend so much more money on dumb shit that is irrelevant and never even think twice. Value is this funny proposition and how we place it. When we comes to investing in ourselves, it's amazing how some people will think of value. Oh my God, that program's $5,000. You guys are insane. And it's like, okay, I guess you're not worth five grand. Like, you know, the things that, that Elon and I teach have taken us well north of two decades to learn. And I'm not talking about we read a book for two, 20 decades. I mean, we have been in the fucking trenches doing spiritual exorcism warfare for 21 plus years now. These lessons have come with an extreme amount of commitment an action on our part to learn really simple things <laughs> that fundamentally are so simple, but to be able to communicate them in a simple way 
is the challenge because what we're talking here is esoteric and esoteric things don't need language at all to be explained. But for this Western civilized culture, we have to figure out how to, how to present these ideas in a way that is palpable and approachable to everybody. And I actually think that's what Elon and I are gifted at. We're gifted at, we're gifted at giving it words and structure so that you can start to taste it and touch it until you realize, Oh, I don't need any of the words or the structure at all. It's always just been here, but to come to that realization, it takes commitment on your part. So just saying that I love you guys again, intuitive mind dot live coupon code half H A L F 50. Save yourself 50%. Again, it's a bargain at full price. If you feel like you really want to give Elon and I a tip, pay the full price. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't take half off <laughs> and we are very excited to be with you this year, this weekend, uh, I hope wherever you are is lovely and sunny. Um, thank you for being here and listening to us rant. We hope you get that everything is really coming from love and our desire for you to experience yourself in a liberated, loving and free way. Um, just like we really want for everybody on this planet. We sh we're sure that that's ultimately the reason you're here because you want to explore how do we become a society that's more loving and compassionate. And that's really all we care about. I want, I want a great world for my kids to live into. Elon does too. Love you guys. We'll Love see, you guys. You see you at the weekend. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.